Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence here and in this video I'm going to talk about all Kim Possible games for DGBA. Kim Possible Revenge of the Monkey Fist is a bad game. And not because the concept of the game is bad, but because the execution is poor. The game is a platformer and for that to be a success, one of the elements are the controls. And another one are the platforms, because this is a platformer. Well, in this game the controls are bad. They are responsive, but still something about them doesn't give you that sensation that you're in control or that you're in full control. And also the collision is kind of weird. And there are moments where you can't use your gadget unless you're in the perfect position. And the level designs don't help either. Many obstacles blend into the environment, which makes avoiding them hard. Also the animations are on the bad side of the spectrum. Boss battles are ridiculous, enemies just stand there waiting for you to kick them, and even if you get gadgets, using them feels sloppy. And if you jump on an enemy's head, you take damage, which is weird for a platformer. The game is bad, its level designs and bad controls make the experience rather unpleasant. Kim Possible 2 Dragon's Demise is a way better game, and you can spot that not only in the better graphics, but in the better controls too. Also the game is more varied. In the first game, aside of boss battles, you will do the same thing in each level, but here you get rollerblade levels, swimming levels and flying levels. You get levels where you play as Ron or as Rufus, which are more annoying than fun. The controls are clunky there. The game is longer too. If the first one took you around 1 hour to finish, this one takes you 1 hour and a half to finish. And if you start the game on New Game Plus and play with the character fully upgraded, you can access areas that were inaccessible before. The platforming is also way better, controls feel good, and the level designs keep up with the well-made controls. Also a feature that was lacking in the first game was added here, you can now damage enemies by jumping on their heads. Another big improvement over its predecessor is the battery save option. This game is a big improvement over its predecessor. Kim Possible 3 Team Possible tries to spice up an already great game, and it succeeds. Now the game isn't focused solely on Kim. It's focused, as the title says, on Team Possible. You play the levels as all of the three members of the team. And you will play a level multiple times as each character has to get across a level. Kim solves parts of the puzzles, then Ron continues, and it's interesting that most of the times the characters don't take the same path. Kim being more acrobatic takes more aerial paths, while Ron having his boot gadgets will take other paths. And Rufus, the naked bull rat, will be useful too in solving some puzzles. Playing as three characters, you will have more gadgets at your disposal. But even if gadgets and puzzles are plentier, the swimming and flying levels from earlier are gone. In the whole game, there is only one skating level. But even so, the game still remains high quality. So, as a conclusion, I recommend you play Kim Possible 2 and 3. Even if they have some occasional difficult jumps, the games are great, and even non-fans of the cartoon will be able to enjoy the two games. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.